Welcome to Retro Americana. I'm your host, Jeremy Scott. All right, folks, I'm going to keep it real simple this week because I don't have the amount of time that I normally do. Because the film I'm going to show you, The Story of New York, is about 20 minutes long. So about halfway through, I'm going to cut it off. We'll go to commercial, and then we'll come back, and we'll wrap the rest of the show up. No artifact due to the length of the film tonight. I think it's really cool. The story of New York. I love these, these, <laughs> I love these things. Okay, so check it out. City, a city of tall buildings, narrow dark streets, magnificent parks, broad avenues, homes and schools, stores and theaters, and palatial hotels. A fascinating city, an incredible city. The commercial, financial, trading, and cultural heart of a great nation, the United States of America. To many of the world's peoples, New York City and the United States are one and the same. Its skyscrapers, traffic-filled thoroughfares, and crowded sidewalks are thought of as typically American, a monument to our nation's restless energy, to our passion for things big and great. For New York is both a big city and a great city, the largest city of the Western Hemisphere, second largest in the world. It is home to almost eight million people, and to millions of Americans it has become the symbol of our country. What is the story behind New York? Why is New York, once a little Dutch settlement, the great city it is today? There are many answers to those questions, and one of the most important lies in the city's location. On that day in the year 1626, when the agents of the Dutch West Indian Company paid the Manhattan Indians $24 for the island now named for them, they did so mainly for commercial reasons. Even then, the advantages of the small trading post's geographical position were apparent. It commanded the outlet of a broad river, the Hudson, navigable for many miles inland. It boasted a superb harbor, sheltered deep water bays, affording safe anchorage for the largest ships. It stood astride an obvious route of trade that would someday connect the new world with the old and the most densely populated areas of North America with both Central and South America, and it dominated a back country of vast potential wealth. In the short 300 years of its history, New York City has more than fulfilled the wildest expectations of its founders. Today, the city comprises five districts or boroughs. The island of Manhattan remains the nucleus and center of interest of Greater New York part of the city's commercial and financial business. The Bronx, sometimes called the Borough of Industries, lies on the mainland to the north and east. Across the river from Manhattan lies the Borough of Brooklyn, which in turn is flanked by the Borough of Queens. Both of these boroughs are on the southern end of Long Island, and are for the most part residential. In New York Bay, located near the New Jersey shore, is Staten Island, which is known as the Borough of Richmond, the least populated of the five boroughs. Richmond forms a connecting link in the overland motor routes leading from New York City to the western United States. Between Staten Island and Manhattan, Ferry boats ply all day long, carrying passengers, automobiles, trucks, and bulk freight. From the deck of one of these boats, one may catch a glimpse of the great Statue of Liberty, a figure that has stirred the emotions of countless immigrants to our shores. 
Here in New York's harbor dock the ships of the world. This magnificent water gate, open the year round, deep enough for the largest vessels and spacious enough to hold the entire United States Navy without obstructing normal traffic, has been of great importance to our entire national economy. Without this natural advantage, New York itself would never have advanced to its present position. For waterborne commerce has contributed much to the growth of the city. By every measure, the port of New York is the biggest and busiest in the world. It is estimated that any six of the other leading ports of the globe could be placed within it and yet leave room to spare. Its ocean-going craft touch about 90% of all foreign ports, bringing practically all of the silk goods, furs, cotton and linen manufactures, jewelry, gems, chemicals, coffee, sugar and cocoa sent to this country. Over 5,000 foreign ships dock here each year, about one every half hour of each day, carrying almost half the entire foreign trade of the United States. The majority of the nation's important railroads, as well as its major truck lines, enter the port in some manner. Here they load and unload every conceivable kind of freight. The freight cars alone, entering and leaving the area each year, could fill eight tracks across the continent from coast to coast. In keeping with its position as the leading commercial city of the United States, New York is also the financial center of our nation. Wall Street and other streets of the financial district are deep, narrow canyons of tall buildings, the homes of the country's great banking houses, the Continental Bank, the Bankers Trust Company, branches and agencies of foreign banks. On Pine Street is one of the two largest banking institutions in the United States, the Chase National Bank. But it is the New York Stock Exchange on Broad Street, America's greatest securities market, that perhaps typifies the business of the Wall Street District. On the floor of the exchange's great hall, stocks and bonds are bought and sold. Over a million phone calls a day are handled here, and each transaction is carefully recorded to be communicated by telegraph, radio, and cable all over the world. But commerce and finance are not the only occupations of New Yorkers. The city is a busy manufacturing area and the leading wholesale and retail trade and export center in the nation. New York's clothing business, the city's leading industry and fourth largest in the United States, crowds the center of Manhattan. Here are produced three out of four of the ready-made coats and dresses and four out of five of the fur garments worn by American women. The streets here are packed with trucks while through narrow traffic holes, push boys guide hand trucks of metal pipe with clothing swaying from their racks. Clothing that is worn by millions of Americans. With more theaters, schools, libraries and museums than any other American city, New York must be ranked as our nation's cultural leader. The Metropolitan Museum of Art, perhaps the greatest center of classical art and learning in America, exerts an influence that is worldwide. While the Museum of Modern Art exhibits displays of modern painting, sculpture and photography, and is the repository of a unique and valuable motion picture collection. Yet, for all its imposing size and activity, New York is a city of people, and it is the city's people that make it great. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break, uh, and then we're going to come back and finish up the story of New York. Stay tuned.